Hi, we are Janne Gurrestein and Lotte Kazenbrood from the University Medical Center Utrecht, the Netherlands. We are the lead authors on the research methods and reporting paper on how to translate clinical trial results to individual patients in terms of gain in healthy life expectancy. Uh, we present methods for lifetime predictions using an illustration example based on a women's health study. A randomized controlled trial of almost 40,000 initially healthy women receiving aspirin or placebo who, are, who were followed up for almost 10 years. So, Lotte, can you explain the rationale for this idea? Yeah, so treatment effects from randomized trials are typically presented in terms of a risk reduction or a number needed to treat. And that suggests that the disease can be prevented. However, many diseases, including atherosclerosis, are in fact chronically progressive and the aim of treatment is to slow down uh, the disease process. Um, so treatment is in that case successful if the disease event can be delayed until after someone dies from something else. Okay, but why is this important? Well, with this in mind, the traditional risk-based treatment in cardiovascular disease prevention looks completely ridiculous because we only start treating at a very advanced age. It's about 5 for 12, it's almost too late. Um, and that leads to missed treatment opportunities. Um, so instead, it would be better to slow down the disease process at, at a much earlier stage. For example, have a look at this uh, JBS3 calculator that calculates the, risk, uh, the effect from risk factor modification from a lifetime perspective. And as you can see, the uh, benefit from treatment is uh, expressed in terms of gain in life expectancy free from cardiovascular disease. And starting early in life, patients have an entire benefit, to, uh, an entire lifetime to benefit from treatment. Okay, but how can we estimate gain in healthy life expectancy when we only have trials with limited follow-up? Well, that is exactly what we uh, explain in this paper. Um, instead of including patients at time point zero and following them up until the end of the study, uh, we used age as the time axis in these methods. So patients are enrolled from their age at study entry until their age at study exit. That results in overlapping observations and those can be used for lifetime, for entire life course predictions. And a second essential feature of lifetime prediction modeling is uh, accounting for competing risks. So in this case, uh, cardiovascular uh, non-cardiovascular mortality, because taking into account that a patient may die from something else becomes increasingly important uh, in long-term predictions. Hmm. So what did you find when you applied these methods to the women's health study? Well, for example, this 48-year-old woman, what if she takes aspirin the rest of her life? Um, the red line that you see here is her estimated survival curve in that case. Um, and what if she doesn't take aspirin? That's the blue line. So the difference between both uh, estimated survi uh, survivals, estimated life expectancy, that is her uh, predicted benefit from treatment. So in this case, seven months gain in life expectancy free from cardiovascular disease. So next we uh, performed similar calculations for all combinations of risk factors. Um, shown in this table are the um, uh, number of months potentially gained by aspirin. Well, we know that the risk-based approach results in selection of older patients for treatment. But if you look at this table, you see that the younger patients with otherwise high risk factors are actually most likely to benefit from lifelong aspirin therapy. Um, and that's simply due to their longer remaining life expectancy in which they can benefit from treatment. And that's an important finding because it might change our decision about initiating uh, preventive therapy in cardiovascular disease prevention. So, in contrast to the classical uh, risk-based treatment strategy, mm -hmm. these results urge for starting cardiovascular disease prevention at a much earlier age. Exactly, yeah. But how do we know that these uh, lifetime predictions are actually valid? Well, that's a good point. Um, we tested the temp uh, temporal validation in the long-term extended follow-up data of the Women's Health Study. Um, as you can see in the calibration plot, the 17-year uh, predicted survivals correspond well with the observed, observed survivals at 17 years of follow-up. And also the discriminatory ability is good with a C-statistic of 0.72, so that's satisfactory. In summary, these results question the traditional risk-based treatment approach strategy, uh, currently applied in clinical practice and recommended by guidelines. This opens the discussion for starting cardiovascular disease prevention at a much earlier age. Thank you for watching this video.